a snake! Woo! Super excited! Just got a new package! Uh, I'm super excited about this wonderful... Okay, so when you first get your new animal, and you take it out of the bag or the container, it's really important to just kind of do like a general once over. Now, most people are just gonna be like, oh, new snake. What I do is I'm of course gonna look for mites. Um, that's always a big thing. Um, but I'm also just gonna look to make sure there's like no bumps or lumps or anything that could potentially be on the snake that I wasn't notified about. Um, and I'm also just gonna kind of overall look to make sure the animals are in good um, health. Uh, it's got a good weight and all of that fun stuff. You just want the animal to look overall very healthy. So if you do find anything that you're not super pleased about or something that uh, wasn't already disclosed to you, uh, you have the opportunity right after getting it out of the box to contact the person you got it from and discuss. When you're looking at carpet pythons, typically there's four species that are the most common that you're gonna be looking at. This happens to be a jungle carpet, but there's also Centralian carpet pythons, coastal carpet pythons, which are actually the largest, and Erie and Jaya carpets, which are kind of on the smaller side. This is a jungle zebra jag, and it is absolutely crazy. Check out that pattern. There's nothing else like this. Pure Darwin albino, and man, check that out. And boy, do they turn pretty when they get older. Okay, so whenever you get any species of animal, or a carpet python, you know, you want to soak them after you've done your physical inspection. And this is, again, just to rehydrate the animal. Also, if there does happen to be any mites on the animal, they're going to drown in this water. So usually, I'll let them sit for a couple of hours, maybe like a quarter inch of water, nothing too deep. Uh, but it's also a great time to do any finishing touches you might want to do on the enclosure you're going to put them in. Um, dialing in the heat. Uh, or uh, just making sure you throw that last piece of foliage in there so it looks just perfect. So after your snake has been soaking for a little while, you're gonna go ahead and take it out. And if this is just your pet snake and it's the only snake you've got and uh, you're gonna put it in your enclosure, awesome. If you have multiple snakes, it's really important to quarantine and it's basically, again, just another step to take uh, to make sure that this animal new animal isn't sick and isn't going to spread it to anything else that you might have. So you can take your animal out and you're going to move it to your enclosure. Now there's a bunch of different enclosures that work really well for carpet pythons. This uh, young jungle carpet would fit really well in like a three foot by two foot by two foot cage. Could also fit really well in an FB90 rack system. All depends upon what you have and uh, what you want to do. Jungle carpets really appreciate height. They are probably the most arboreal, or tree dwelling, um, of all these semi-arboreal species, the Morelia complex. So now if you were to get something like this, like a big coastal carpet python, this girl's almost eight, eight and a half feet long, you're certainly gonna want something a bit bigger than a three by two by two cage. You're probably gonna want something more like a four or five foot by two by maybe even three foot cage. Now, it's important to note, coastal carpets are not necessarily as arboreal as a jungle carpet as an adult, and mostly it's just because their sheer size. Uh, there's not too many thin tree limbs that are gonna hold a snake like this up very well. So it's important to keep that in mind. They will utilize whatever space you give them. So when you're putting your animal in the enclosure, obviously temperatures and humidities are super, super important. So how are you gonna figure that out? Well, knowing where they come from is certainly a great start. So these guys come from Australia and New Guinea. So it's important to know this video is just a generalized video over all carpet pythons. So certain subspecies like the bread lie or centralians and the Erie and Jaya's or West Papuans might like it a little bit different than what I'm saying. So it's important to continue to do your research and just use this as an overall carpet python how-to. So these guys are gonna like it Regardless, a hot spot of the 88 to 92 degree area and an ambient temperature of about 80 to 85. Um, they can get down to lower temps and they'll be fine, but uh, those kind of markers are kind of picture perfect for these guys. Um, humidity, you really don't want to get super, super humid. The uh, Erie and Jaya's can handle humidity a little bit better, but you want to be around that, I'd say 20 to 40 percent, depending on the species. And uh, again, 
doing your own homework is going to help you figure out a lot on these guys. So carbon pythons have a little bit of a nasty rep, especially as babies they can be kind of nippy. And the big reason for that is these guys are pretty small when they hatch, so uh, they think everything is going to eat them. But once they get older, most of the times they settle right down. So they've got a great disposition. You can see this girl here is absolutely wonderful. And uh, as long as you make no fast movements in front of their face, they're generally pretty great. So as with a lot of other Boyd species, rodents can make up a huge part of their diet. Um, sometimes it's really great to throw uh, any kind of avian material in for them as well. So um, they'll eat chicks, quail, all those kind of things. So you can actually give these guys quite a diverse diet. Um, but of course it's a lot easier to get your hands on mice and rats and they can do just fine on that. Don't forget that here at Nerd, we have a 10% off discount code at Rodent Pro, which you can certainly get your mice and rats, but you can also get chicks and quail from them too if you want to spice up your diet for your new pet. Overall, carpet pythons are absolutely wonderful animals. They can make great pets. They're super inquisitive, semi-arboreal, so they're going to come out, they're going to climb all around their enclosure. Whether you're going to keep them in a rack or keep them in a cage, they're amazing animals. And I mean, there's really nothing quite like them. So, Check out carpet pythons, do some research, learn a little bit more about each specific species, but regardless, you're going to have an awesome time with your new pet carpet python. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!